Now we have taken the time to define what it means for a function to be continuous on an open interval. What we haven't yet done is talk about being uh, continuous on a closed interval. So we will uh, we'll introduce this concept in the following fashion. Uh, f is continuous on the closed interval uh, and we'll use interval notation for this closed interval and we'll say the closed interval from A to B if three criteria have to be true F is continuous on the associated uh, open interval F is continuous from the right at x equals a. Now what it means to be continuous from the right is that the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x is equal to f of a. We do this because when we consider the closed interval from a to b, if the function is only defined on the right side of a, then we shouldn't worry about it having to be continuous from the left hand side. Similarly, we would also say that f is continuous from the left at x equals b. So for a right endpoint, the function is only necessarily defined on the left hand side would be saying that the limit as x approaches b just from the left of f of x is equal to f of b. Now an example of where continuity on a closed interval might come into play, consider the following function. f of x is equal to the square root of 9 minus x squared. For those that have observed things like this before, this would represent a semicircle centered at the origin of radius 3. Now given that it's a semicircle and I'm able to draw it with one fell swoop like that, we would say that f is continuous on the closed interval from negative 3 to positive 3 it's impossible for us to have a two-sided limit at negative 3 or a two-sided limit at uh, x equals 3 due to the fact that that's not part of the domain of the function. So one big thing to observe here is that the closed inter interval on which it's continuous is also the domain of f. I will be addressing the connection between the two of those in a future video.